It is Friday, September 28th. Let's talk PlayStation. As always, I'd like to encourage you all to stay tuned to the end of the video for our Let's Talk Plus giveaway. And with that in mind, let's get into our first news story, which is about the PlayStation Classic. Sony gave us some new details about the miniature PlayStation console. Well, two things actually. So the first one being, you can use any USB smartphone adapter to power this thing up, which is good. I think most people usually have one of those lying around, and if you don't, they're pretty cheap. It's still pretty bogus that's not included in the box, but at least it's a bare minimum solution for turning on your PlayStation Classic. The other one being that there is no PSN functionality whatsoever, which I find quite odd that they had to acknowledge this. It seemed pretty obvious to me it wasn't going to do that. It was just going to be a novelty offline device that plays 20 PlayStation games, and that's it, just like the NES or SNES Classic, but I guess people wanted some confirmation about that. And what's funny is that, that because I expected that, reading this news story made me think, Oh yeah, that kind of would have been pretty cool. Like, just as a simple thing, right? Like, let's say all 20 games had trophies and you would log into PSN just to sync those trophies. You wouldn't have a friends list or anything like that, right? But uh, just something like that I think would have been pretty cool. But then they would have had to add Wi-Fi to the box and then some sort of UI to make that, you know, that process of logging in and syncing trophies. Like, that's already too much for a $100 box. That would have added some value to the $100 box, but I'm sure Sony's looking at a pretty healthy profit margin for this thing because... There's really not that much to it when they're manufacturing it at a mass scale, so I'm sure they want to keep that and not have to complicate matters even more. Anyway, getting into the next news story, I want to do this one quick and, and up first because, you know, you guys are so sensitive about this issue, even though I think this is great news, but crossplay is coming to PlayStation 4. Sony has given in, so they announced that this is starting off with uh, Fortnite. And they're starting it in an open beta, apparently, which is quite odd. This whole thing is pretty odd. So actually, the announcement was written on the PlayStation blog by Sony Interactive Entertainment President and CEO John Codera. And let me just share some, um, some pieces from the blog post. Actually, so it reads, Following a comprehensive evaluation process, SIE has identified a path towards supporting cross-platform features for select third-party content. We recognize that PS4 players have been eagerly awaiting an update, and we appreciate the community's continued patience as we have navigated through this issue to find a solution. He goes on to say this represents a major policy change for SIE, and we are now in the planning process across the organization to support this change. We will update the community once we will have more details to share, including more specifics regarding the beta timeframe and what this means for other titles going forward. Now, I've done my rant on the crossplay thing. You guys don't need to hear that again, but this is a good thing that needed to happen, not just for Sony, but the greater good of gaming communities. As I've said, if Sony wants to sell PS4s, they should do it with exclusive games, exclusive content, a better UI, a better storefront, making PlayStation a better platform instead of forcing people into buying PS4s. What's funny about this blog post is that it's just, it's its like they're begging for compliments that they've finally given into this, right? By saying that they've evaluated it and it's, it's a long process and a long policy. Like, come on, are you serious? We've had examples where crossplay was just turned on by accident by third-party developers. You know what I mean? Like, this has just happened. Now look, I'm not a, I'm not a software engineer, I'm, I'm not an engineer whatsoever, I don't program games, so I understand my place when I say this isn't an easy thing to do or, or, or what have you, but when, you, when it just happens by accident and then third party developers have to quickly pull the feature so that Sony doesn't get mad at them, it seems like this is much easier to do than say something like PlayStation Network name changes, so this blog post just reads like bullshit to me you know like they just want some accolades for this and they gotta carefully plan this moving forward with third-party developers like dude just let people play games with whoever they want and focus on making playstation great the other details specifically to fortnite is that what it's what you'd expect so it's full cross-platform play with all platforms that the game's available on your progress transfers your v bucks and costumes and all that nonsense it's as you'd expect and hopefully this will be the case for most third-party games moving forward, but with Sony, who knows at this point. Now for this next one, I want to step backwards a little bit and focus on some PlayStation 3 exclusives because their servers are closing October 25th, 2018. PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale, Twisted Metal, and Warhawk. I love Warhawk. I, it was one of my most beloved multiplayer games. I wish we could have Warhawk on PlayStation 4. I think it's so fun. Some of my fondest PlayStation 3 memories were on that game. We actually did a remembering video on that uh, on that game not too long ago, which you could go check out. PlayStation All-Stars, I think, is more of a loaded topic. Some people loved it. Some people hated it. Um, some people say that the PlayStation characters just weren't as iconic or they hated how the 
knockout system worked. Uh, I've always vouched for it being a, a pretty good game. I enjoyed my time with it, although I'm not even much into fighters and, and things like that. So who am I really to say when I'm not super into the genre to begin with? Twisted Metal, I think, was also kind of a tragic case because that was a game that a lot of people were excited for at the time when David Jaffe had secretly... Well, not secretly, because people were asking him, like, are you doing it? Are you doing it? And he would lie, and then sure enough, it was announced anyway. Um, and, you know, I think a lot of excitement went into that, but then people bought it, and again, it just didn't really do much for the franchise, so it sucks. Uh, but for Warhawk specifically, I will be streaming that game before it closes. I guarantee you that. Actually, I'd encourage you to follow on Twitter or my Twitch account so I can play with some of you guys one last time before it closes. So if you want details on that, stay tuned to the Twitter account. Next up, we got some PS4 bundles, one for Call of Duty Black Ops 4 and one for Red Dead Redemption. Normally, I wouldn't talk about this unless they were special edition consoles, like they were dressed up in some cool, fancy way, but these are regular models. I'm talking about this because they're PS4 Pro bundles, and it seems like in recent months, or in the past month at least, there's been a shortage of PS4 Pros. A lot of people are reporting that they can't find them in stores, and they're hunting around. Even Amazon's been getting out of stock of them a lot lately, and you're actually think seeing third-party vendors sell them over MSRP, which is pretty weird. So a lot of people have been asking me about that. I guess I'll just touch on it real quick. I don't think this is a situation where there's some sort of, like Sony's trying to create artificial demand or anything weird or insidious like that. I think this is more of a situation where it's just a low volume machine and when demand upticks a little bit and the units, you know, sell out, it's just a situation where the, you know, Sony's not going to manufacture more of them. It's a low volume machine. Uh, it came out 2016. That was around when PS4 sales were around 40, 45 million. We're at about 85, well, no, closer to around 82, 83 million PS4s. Sony has given us a metric, which is that one in five PS4s is a PS4 Pro. If you do some quick math there that averages out to around anywhere for, and these are super rough numbers, mind you, so you know, I'm talking out of my ass, basically. Anywhere from six to eight million PS4 Pros. And sure, that may sound like a lot, but in a two year period, that's not a lot at all. So Sony's not gonna manufacture a buttload of PS4 Pros on the off chance that, you know, there's the, the demand falls off a cliff and then you got all these PS4 Pros taking up uh, shelf space. So I don't think there's anything crazy going on, but if you are ever looking for a PS4 Pro, I guess these would be some good bundles anyway because they will be bundled with Red Dead or Call of Duty Black Ops 4 essentially for free. Anyway, going into our next news story, Sony recently announced a new version of the gold wireless headphones, which are a beautiful, pure monochromatic white. I'm not going to lie, this looks pretty gorgeous. And admittedly, I wouldn't, I wouldn't pair this with a black PlayStation 4, but if you have one of those glacier white models, I think this would look very nice. You know, honestly, there's something very alluring about going all white with, like, your technology and your furniture and things like that. It looks really good when it's really clean, <laughs> and uh, that's not for me. I like keeping all my stuff like a slate gray or black, but if you're into that sort of thing, this will be available in October. So anyway, during TGS 2018, sure enough, Kojima showed off a new trailer for Death Stranding. I'm not gonna lie, this is probably my favorite trailer so far, probably because it's very... <sighs> I mean, yeah, Troy Baker's in it, which is not surprising at all, but I guess what I like about this trailer is that it's the most video gamey we've seen so far, if that makes any sense. The pure fact of having sort of an antagonizing character approach, summon this large beast and then go away as if you're left to deal with this thing, it, it comes off as very, you know, oh my god, this is actually a video game, you know what I mean? Like, so I like this trailer a lot. Well, anyway, Kojima had mentioned how the release date for this game has not changed. Now, we don't have a release date publicly. He's referring to the fact that internally the developer has an idea of where they want to release this game, and so far, in terms of how many years in development it's been, he's saying that that has not changed. So the team is targeting something, and that hasn't changed in the years that they've been targeting it. That's very vague, of course. Uh, I believe there was one interview like two years back or something that said Kojima had mentioned how the game was aiming for a 2018 release, which seemed pretty absurd, and the game's not going to hit a 2018 release. So I don't know what they're saying or what they're, what they're aiming for, but it seems like the game's making progress. How fast, I don't know, but at least I walked away from a trailer actually, not that I didn't like all the other trailers, but this one I'm really like, all right, this, that was pretty cool. So recently, Sony Ben's creative director, John Garvin, did an interview with official PlayStation Magazine talking about Days Gone, and he had touched on the fact that Days Gone is actually more story-driven than we're led to believe, because we, we haven't really seen a whole lot of narrative from that game. Most reveals and uh, trailers that we've seen from the game have all been like pure gameplay, which is refreshing, by the way. I like that. Uh, it's not often that you see this much gameplay out of a game because 
so many trailers and, and teasers nowadays focus on the narrative and you see, you see gameplay later, so it is refreshing, but he was actually quoted as saying, We haven't been focusing too much on story yet, there will be a lot more to come on that coming soon. I'm the writer and the director, and I've written all the games for SIE Ben, and they are all narrative story driven games, so this is a huge part of the game, we're just not talking about it yet. So I'll be interested to see when the studio is ready to talk more story, because honestly, if you do watch some gameplay, there's like small moments of dialogue, and you can tell that it's you can tell that it is narrative driven, like maybe more so than, than we think. We just haven't seen a whole lot of it, so I, I do, I want to see more for sure. Now moving on to PlayStation VR, Sony Shuhei Yoshida was talking to the Japanese PlayStation blog at TGS 2018, discussing how in the future they might want to focus on full scale projects, deeper experiences, things like that. He was quoted as saying, Users will not want a short experience, they will want to have a game to play for a longer time. Based on such expectations, I came up with the strategy of making full-scale games of larger scale in the second and third years. Now, I think this is the right strategy moving forward. With a lot of VR content, a vast majority of VR content, you, you know, you're, you're typically stationary, you're doing maybe some simple hand gestures, and it's anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour of really seeing all of what that experience is. That's a lot of VR content. And we have these proof of concepts like Resident Evil 7 where you can do a 5 to 10 hour game and it works quite well. And then you have situations like Skyrim VR where it's an aged game, it wasn't meant for VR, but if you go back and add a VR it certainly works despite the clunky menus and things like that. So. You know, I think a lot of people want to see that we know about the potential of VR, and we we have these examples where it works quite well. Now we just need more of those, right? A lot of those shorter experiences are gateway drugs, if you will, where people really like VR, so they go out and buy it, but then they find that they only have a few options when it comes to full-scale games. So I think it's important now to start working on those full-scale games and show people why VR is so great. For our final news story, you've probably heard about it from this past week, but Telltale Games was hit with some major layoffs. Most of the company has been laid off. Now, we won't get into the details about this news story because, honestly, there's a lot going on here. Uh, people not getting severance. Now, there's a lawsuit, but they have obligations to this last deal that they had. And then there's uh, this question of the last season of The Walking Dead. So it's it's super long and crazy. But I wanted to include this for the one silver lining of this news story, which is that it always sucks when a developer goes under but it's always so uplifting to see this outpouring amount of, of support from other developers and publishers that will post their job listings and try to find a lot of these guys some work so they get back on their feet nice and fast, including some of Sony's developers as well, trying to reach out and just saying, you know, hey, we got listings, we got tons of job listings, come reach out to us, we'll do an interview. And it's, it's just like, it's the one small ray of hope, you know what I mean? Because so many of these guys guys and girls, they put in 80, 90 hour work weeks to make the games that we enjoy. And my God, it does not get appreciated enough, especially when you see some of these people and their ridiculous demands of them going back and working for free for the fans. Like, get out of here with that bullshit. These are people, all right? They deserve the humanity that they, that they should be given. It's baffling that these things even have to be mentioned, but sure enough, they do. So, Best of luck to everybody from Telltale Games. You guys did a fantastic job, and I hope the very best for you. And now we move into Let's Talk Plus, our weekly Let's Talk PlayStation giveaway where you could win a $10 PlayStation Network card. The winner of last week was Dissector from Johannesburg, South Africa. I will be contacting you on Twitter very soon so you can claim your $10 PlayStation Network code. And if you would like to win a $10 PlayStation Network code, follow the link down below to the Gleam app. You can subscribe to the channel. You can follow me on Twitter. You can retweet, um, well, you can retweet actually the PS4 documentary, which is great. That's a good segue. So if you want to enter, enter into the uh, Let's Talk Plus giveaway, follow the link down below. You could win. The winner will be announced next week. Anyway, that gets into our, that's a nice segue actually, into the into our closer. So the PS4 documentary went live on Monday. I'm so glad a lot of you guys enjoyed it. Uh, that video took a long time to make and it's, it's awesome that you guys really enjoyed it. So you can actually also retweet the, uh, I'll tweet it out, um, I'll tweet it out later, but it will be uh, a link to the PS4 documentary, and that'll also give you another entry into the $10 PSN code if you are inclined to do so, which <laughs> I think you should. Other than that, I got two videos coming for you this coming week. So on Monday, we're going to be doing a video on PlayStation Network name changes. Uh, it deserves its own video. And then also, I don't know when, it's, but at some point, it's something special. I just got a new channel trailer coming up um, because the one that, if you're subscribed and you don't ever see it, but if you're unsubscribed, you see a channel trailer. And I made it like three years ago. It's back at my old place. 
it's kind of cringy. <laughs> so I was like, I gotta make a new one. So I'll upload that at some point. It's like a minute long, you know, it's nothing crazy, but keep an eye out for that. I'll make it public so everybody sees it right away and uh, you know, that'll be, that'll be fun. <laughs> I'm so enthusiastic sometimes. All right, um, so that concludes this week's episode of Let's Talk PlayStation. I'm Ryan Benecki. Thank you all so much for talking with me, and I will see you guys next Friday.